So there's this guy named Richard Raspberry, and uh, he has made a ton of videos against atheists and on the topic of atheism. I mean, he actually goes out on a limb to call out uh, certain people like the atheist experience, calling them the coward, ex cowardice experience, whatever, it, whatever he likes to call it. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, he called out Jacqueline Glenn, I believe. And, uh, let's see, he even go after Richard Dawkins, you know, telling him, oh, Richard Dawkins is a coward for not debating me. Yet Richard Dawkins, you know, has debated creationists far smarter than him. I mean, here's the video. Hello, this is an update. So Richard Dawkins is currently on Twitter. He is tweeting right this moment. Um, as you can see, I've tweeted him back, asking him to debate me. He is being evasive and ignoring me publicly. Uh, is this a sign of cowardice? I think so. So here's another update. Richard Dawkins is currently on Twitter. He's tweeted just two minutes ago, as you can see here. I have asked him to debate me. He is currently ignoring me. Um, I don't know why this is, probably because he is um, too afraid to have his atheism uh, scrutinised publicly. Um, is he insecure in his atheism? Most probably. Here is one of his pilgrims trying to stand up for him, saying, I've only got three followers, why should he debate you? Well, let's see. If he's not a coward, debate me. Oh yes, Richard Dawkins should waste his valuable time debating someone who doesn't even have that many subscribers, who, who isn't even that popular on YouTube, or even well known. Yes, Richard Dawkins should waste his time with you. Brilliant. I mean, he could be debating some smarter creationist, but no, he should be debating you. And if he doesn't debate you, he's a coward. That That's your logic right there. Brother... <coughs> Just because someone doesn't want to debate you, doesn't make them a coward. Especially when they have debated people that are smarter than you. Seriously, there are creationists smarter than you who don't resort to using the Bible at all. There are creationists smarter than you. And you're telling Richard Dawkins that he's a coward for not debating you. Oh, my God. You, sir, are a complete imbecile. I'll give you credit, though. You do have guts. You have guts. And if you really are that desperate for a debate, well, I'm ready for you. So, how about I respond to one of your videos, hmm? Hello, ladies and gents. Those of you who watch my videos will be aware that my channel really contains videos which really just cover atheism and theism. I'm a theist myself, of course, rationally, sensibly, and I speak out against atheism because I see it for what it is, which is pollution of culture and society and the going down the hill of everything we know as sane. Please explain exactly how we're doing this. If you use the tradition of marriage between two men or two women as an example, then you already lost the debate. What do I mean by that? Well, <clears throat> there was a song once. Do you remember the film, the original, Willy Wonka and the Cho uh, Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory? Was it something like that? And there was a song, and he sings, Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. Well, that song, that song sums up atheism exactly, doesn't it? Have you ever been? Have you ever noticed that? Says the man who believes in a giant sky daddy who tells people that if they don't love him, they're going to send them straight to hell for all of eternity. Yeah. 
You're the more sane one here. Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. That's atheism. You see, Christianity is based upon historical facts and evidence, records and books and traditions handed down and verified by archaeological finds and discoveries and science. Uh, no, I don't think so. One, Christianity is based on a foundation of faith. Uh, they follow the Bible as their only source of, as their only source of morals, a moral guideline, along with the Ten Commandments and the Seven Deadly Sins. <sighs> If the Bible is some sort of historical document or some sort of history book, then you might as well just give up now because using the Bible just isn't worth it. Seriously, can you actually believe the story about Noah's Ark on how the entire planet was completely flooded? Hell, even if there was a possible way to get every animal on earth into a giant boat. The fact that the that the planet is covered like three times the amount of the ocean, something like that. Once you apply logic to these certain stories, then it just doesn't really add up. It just doesn't. Hell, even if God does in fact exist, chances are the Bible could still be wrong as long as well as the say, the God that you're worshiping. For all we know, this God could be a giant spider. For example, we know that the world was created for, by a mind and that the human mind is based was was formed in relation or in image to that mind which created the universe. And we know this because we are able to do mathematics and do science and integrate into the world and find information. Information in the world, the world is the medium from which trans, uh, information is being transversed from one mind to another. The human mind looks at information and God's given that information. The same way that if you walk into a restaurant and you look at the menu and you say, ah, oh, I'd like the... Um, um, you, you know, you don't, the waiter comes over and you've decided you want the shepherd's pie. You simply point to the um, number on the uh, menu and the waiter looks down and says, like this, and off he goes. And he comes back and brings you out a nice plate of shepherd's pie. You don't even need to speak. He just simply saw the word shepherd's pie and that words, those w letters which are laid out in a certain way, meant something to that waiter. It was transferred through the, the uh, information to the waiter, who then brought forth and manifested that shepherd's pie. I'm talking about food because I'm hungry, by the way. <laughs> I am not sure what exactly you're trying to say. Are you saying that because information exists or <coughs> we um, look at stuff, we observe things, Therefore, there must be a God, because in order for that to happen, we need information written in our brains or something. Uh, you do realize that it's possible that we were sort of born with it. We adapt. We gotten smarter. I mean, ever heard of adaptability? I don't know. I'm not really sure what this guy is trying to say. It's just way too confusing. You're going to have to restate what you have to say. My point is this. If we look at the world and understand that information is what created the universe and information is in us, in DNA, in plants and trees and everything, 
And we contrast that to atheism, which is the pure imagination. It could be whatever you want it to be. Atheists, the current um, fad with atheism, is that nothing created the universe. Let me say that again slowly. Nothing created the universe. Well, I'm not sure about you, but I've never seen nothing do anything. In fact, what does nothing look like? What qualities does nothing have? In fact, it's an oxymoron, isn't it? Because nothing can have no qualities, no attributes, no physical, visual, or any um, attributes whatsoever. So the very fact you can say nothing did, what did nothing do, and how did nothing do it, it's a complete oxymoron, of course. You know, that's just the first problem atheists face, and they hate to admit that. There is no atheist in the world, or, okay, maybe there might be an atheist who would say that nothing comes from something, but that wouldn't be exactly the majority of atheists. You are misrepresenting the atheist community. Have you forgotten about the Big Bang Theory? Not the show, but the actual Big Bang Theory. I know that science isn't exactly, you know, nowhere near that advanced. You know, we don't have all the answers yet. But just because we don't have the answers doesn't mean that God must be doing it. But at any anyway... The Big Bang Theory seems to make a lot more sense than God just creating the universe within seven days. Which doesn't make any sense, considering that it took him five days to create planet Earth, one day to create the universe, on the, and then on the seventh day, he rested. Makes no fucking sense. It's like, you know... Being able to create the Eiffel Tower within one second, but to build a table from Ikea will take you about 20 freaking years. It just doesn't make any sense. And keep in mind that I'm willing to accept the possibility that a god could exist. Or the possibility that god, this god, could have created the Big Bang. It's actually possible. I'm willing to accept that possibility. However, I completely doubt the existence of God or this godlike entity. And I extremely am doubtful that your God, who apparently is almighty, all powerful being, this this guy who sees the past, present, and future is all powerful guy. Apparently, needed five days, five fucking days to work on an insignificant rock compared to two planets the size of the sun. Apparently, this god has limitations. Ugh. <sighs> But atheists live in a world of pure imagination. Again, this is coming from a guy who believes in the sky daddy, who tells people that if they want to not be in hell, they just gotta love this sky daddy. Ugh. Exactly. It's, you know what's really imaginary is... The idea that something this incredibly dumb could actually exist. Your god is extremely dumb. And it's also extremely evil in a way. Flooding the entire planet because everyone there on the planet was evil. Including the children and the babies. Who don't know what good and evil is. So, I do expect a video response from this guy. I really do hope. 
who knows, maybe he'll debate me. Because, you know, this guy, this guy really is desperate for a debate. And I really, really want to debate this guy. Oh, goody. I am the Atheist Gamer. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook. Peace, the game.